On our video for replacing a specific line in a file using C, a viewer recently asked, how could we instead write to a specific line of the file, but have the remaining lines pushed down instead of that line being replaced? So for example, if we have a file like this with five lines in it, we want to be able to write to one of these lines, let's say line three. But instead of that line being replaced, the new text would go on line three and this line and all remaining lines would be pushed down one. Let's implement this in C. The way we're gonna solve this problem is that we're gonna open up both the original file and a temporary file. We're gonna read each line from the original file and write it to the temporary file, except for the one line where we wanna write a new line of content. At that line, we're gonna write in the additional line of content before proceeding with writing the remaining lines from the original file into the temporary file. So to solve this problem in C, we're gonna to have to include a couple libraries to help us. We're gonna include the string.h library because this library includes several helpful functions for working with strings. We're also gonna include stdbool.h so we can make a Boolean variable that we're gonna to use to help us read the file. We're gonna need two file pointers. We'll say file star file for the original file and star temp for the temporary file. We're gonna ask the user for the name of the file to open. We'll store that file name into a character array as a string. So we'll say car file name, and we'll use a very large constant value for the potential file name size. So here we'll say number define file name size 1024, because 1024 characters is plenty of space for any reasonable length file name. We're also going to have to create a temporary file. So we'll also make a car temp file name array that's also going to be file name size in length. And that's where we're going to store the temporary file name that we're going to create. Now we're going to have to read each line of the original file before writing it to the temporary file, which means we're going to have to read it into some sort of character array buffer. So we'll make another constant value for the maximum line length in the original file. And we could make this bigger, but we'll make max line 2048. Because again, 2048 characters is probably enough for any reasonable length line out of file. So we'll make a buffer now with that length. We'll say car buffer max line. Now we're also gonna have to store the string that we wanna write at that specific line number. So we'll make another character array with the same length to store that input that we're gonna get from the user. So we'll say car, new line, max line. And this will store the actual new line of content that we're gonna write into a specific line of the file. We're also gonna to have to store the specific line number where the user wants to write this new line of content. So we'll say int write line for that. Now the next thing we're gonna to have to do is ask the user for the file name the line number, as well as the new line to actually write into the file. So here we'll say printf file, and we'll ask the user for the file name. So we'll say scanf percent %s, and we'll store what they enter into the file name character array as a string. Now to create the temporary file name, what we're gonna do is prepend temp with four underscores onto this file name. So that way if the user enters file.txt, the temporary file name would be temp underscore 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 file.txt. So to prepend this onto the file name that's entered, we're gonna use some of the functions from the string.h library. The first function we'll use is the string copy function, strcpy. We're gonna copy into the temp file name character array, the string temp underscore, 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 underscore. So the initial temp file name string is gonna be temp and then four underscores. So string copy is gonna copy this string here into this temp underscore file name character array. Then we're gonna use the string concatenation function, strcat, to concatenate the file name onto temp file name. So we'll say strcat temp underscore file name, 
and then file name. So what the string concatenation function will do is take this string here in the file name character array that the user entered and it'll concatenate it onto temp file name. That'll give us temp underscore 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 file.txt in the case that the user enters file.txt as the file name. So now that we've created the temp file name, we'll ask the user for the line number that they actually want to write the new line of content to. So first we'll prompt the user, we'll say printf line number, and then we'll store what they enter into the write line integer variable. Then finally, we'll ask the user for the new line of text. So we'll say printf new line to prompt the user. And then to actually store the line entered into the new line character array, we're going to use fgets. So that way the user can include spaces in their actual input here. We'll say fgets new line max line stdin. So what fgets is going to do is read from standard input, in other words, the terminal or the shell here by default, and it's going to store the characters entered into new line up until the user hits the enter character, which is a new line character. It'll store a maximum of max line characters. Now fgets will actually have a problem if we don't do something first. So fgets is going to stop storing characters from the standard input stream into the new line character array when the first new line is encountered. The problem is there's technically already a new line character on the standard input stream because after this scanf, when the user hits enter, that enter, that new line character will be on the standard input stream. So if we don't actually flush that standard input stream first to remove that new line character, fgets won't really do anything in terms of stopping and actually allowing the user to enter in a new string. Instead, what will happen is an empty string will be written to new line and that's it. So first we're going to flush the standard input stream. So we'll say FF flush standard in and that'll flush the standard input stream. So now that we've got all the information we need, let's open the files and get to work. We'll say file is equal to f open file name r. So we're going to open up the original file in read mode. So we're going to be able to read from the original file, which is exactly what we want to do. F open is going to return a file pointer that's going to allow us to access that file. We'll also have to open up the temp file, but the temp file we're going to open up for writing. So we'll say temp is equal to f open temp file name w. And the w is for writing, so we're going to open up the temporary file in writing mode so we can write to the file. Now, if either one of these f opens failed for whatever reason, they're going to return null. So file would be equal to null and or temp would be equal to null. So we'll check for that before we proceed. Because if either file failed to open, we can't really do anything. So if the file is equal to null or temp is equal to null, something has gone wrong. And we'll tell the user that and we'll exit with an error status. So we'll say printf error opening files and then return one. So we're going to tell the user that something went wrong in terms of opening up the files. And we're also going to return one because returning one is a signal to the shell here, to the terminal, that something went wrong in the execution of our program. So now we're going to have to continually read in each line from the original file, writing it to the temporary file until we reach the end of the original file. And in the special case that we're on the line number where we want to insert that new line of text, we're also going to have to first write in that new line of text that the user has provided us with. So to help us with this, we're going to make a Boolean variable. We'll say bool keep reading is equal to true. 
And so long as keep reading is true, we're going to keep trying to read in the next line from the file. We'll also make a variable called current line. And current line is going to keep track of the current line number that we're reading in from the file. And we'll start off at one, because we're going to start reading in the first line of the file. We'll say do, and then while, and so long as keep reading is true, we're going to continue. We're going to read the next line of the file into the buffer. So we'll say f gets and read into the buffer the next line of the file. So f gets is going to read from the file into the buffer up to max line characters. And I'll read that next line of the file and store it into buffer. So each time f gets gets called, it's going to read in the next line. First line one, then line two, and so on. Eventually though, we're going to reach the end of the file and we want to be able to detect that. We'll use the f eof function to do that. So if f eof file is true, we're going to set keep reading to false because at this point we're done reading the file. So f eof accepts the file pointer and it returns true once we've reached the end of the file. We'll also check to see if the current line is equal to the line where we want to write that new line of content. So if the current line is equal to the line where we want to write that new line of content, we'll say f puts and we'll write into the file the new line of content, followed by whatever line we just read in with f gets here. So we just read into the buffer the current content at this line number. We're going to write into the temporary file the new line of content followed by that original line of content at that line number, pushing that line of content down by one. Otherwise, if we haven't reached the end of the file and it's not the special line, we're just going to write this line of content we've just read in into the temporary file. So we'll say f puts buffer temp. So just write that line of content into the temporary file. Then we'll increment current line to recognize that we've advanced one more line in our file. And this should be it. By the time this do while loop is complete, the temporary file will look just like the original file, except for that new line of text will have been inserted. So now what we'll do is close our access to both files because we're done working with them. So we'll say f close file and f close temp. Then finally, we're going to remove the original file and rename the temporary file to the original file name. So remove file name, we'll delete the original file and then rename temp file name to file name, we'll rename that temporary file to have the same name as the original file. So this should be it. Let's now give this a test. So we'll save this program and then we'll compile it. And now we'll try to run it. So we'll enter in file.txt. We'll say write to line number three and we'll write the text test. So let's check out file.txt. And we can see that at line three in file.txt, we've written the new line test and all the other lines afterwards have been shifted down by one. So this is how we can write to a specific line in a file, shifting down the remaining lines using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.